This lesson is about Newton's second law, particularly looking at vertical motion, that's up and down motion. One of the things that we know is that if there is no air resistance, oops, if we have no air, then objects, regardless of mass, fall at the same rate. So I have a book which is going to fall and a feather that's going to fall, they do not have the same mass and yet they, if you drop them uh, from the same height, they're going to land at the same time. So that goes on to say that we know that if we have this book and this feather, yet again, but this time I'm going to drop the book from a higher location. I'm going to drop it from here versus the feather I'm going to drop from here. Here's the ground. It's going to take that book longer to fall down than it is the feather. Remember, we're assuming there is no air resistance. This is happening in a vacuum. So the idea being this book had a further distance to travel and for that reason it took a longer time to travel. Where the feather had a shorter distance to travel, it didn't take as long to travel because of the shorter distance. So what we can say is, is if we know how long something traveled, could we figure out from what height it was dropped? And the answer is yes. So we can now determine the next thing being that the time it takes for an object to travel gives us an idea of what the height is. So let's take a look at that mathematically. Like I said, in this one here, we expect the book to take a longer time to fall because it is from a higher distance or a greater distance, whereas the feather will have a shorter distance to cover and that's why it takes, it's faster to fall. So we can look at that for a couple of ways. Well, we know the reason that is, is that distance is related to the velocity and acceleration. So we can now introduce a new formula, and that is the distance being x, one-half g times t squared. And most of you might be thinking, where in the world is this coming from? So I'm going to just give a little bit of a side note of where this comes from. So we know a couple of things. We know that in one second, this book has traveled 9.8 meters because that is the velocity after one second. The velocity is 9.8 meters per second squared. So it's had one second, it's traveled from zero uh, to now 9.8 meters in that one second. For the next distance, we're going to have it be two seconds. So you're going to see that it will have dropped 29.4 meters. The reason is it has now had two seconds to travel and two seconds right here. In those two seconds, it sped up yet another 9.8 meters, uh, meters per second. So remember the velocity being now 9.8 meters per second. In the second one, it's going to be going even faster, 9.8 meters per second. So now at this point, from here to here, it's traveling 19 meters 0.6. And if I add those two together, I get a total of 29.4 meters. Where this one, let's say this one just dropped in one second. We dropped it and it, one second further it was uh, one second later it uh, dropped to the ground. I know then it had dropped 9.8 meters from the ground. So we can find out where it dropped from based on the math because I know that every second my object is going to fall 9.8 meters per second faster. So how does that work out? Well, for those mathy people, you know that velocity is the acceleration versus time. So let's see if we can manipulate that. 
Well, I know velocity is distance over time. So we'll just write velocity this way. So couldn't I get rid of this t and do that by multiplying t on both sides? Now I've multiplied with another t. And now I have the t squared. So d equals a over t squared. And I want to take the average speed, because it's actually changing speed all along here. Um, and the average speed being divided by 2. Now you do not need to know where I got this equation from, but just to give you an idea of where this comes from. So I can actually write d, and we use often x instead of d, equals 1 half, that's because of this 2, and remember the acceleration we're talking about is gravitational acceleration uh, times t squared. So that's where it comes from. If you want to just memorize the equation and use it, that's perfectly fine with me as well. So let's apply that to some of these problems. Here we have an architect who wants to know how tall a neighboring building is as she tries to construct a new apartment complex with a rooftop view. She wants to use the quickest method to, ter to determine the height, so she decides to clear the yard of the neighboring building and drop a rubber ball while a colleague takes a video of the event with a timer. She finds that it takes 4.2 seconds to hit the ground. How tall is the building? Well, let's start with our givens. So the first given I'm given is 4.2 seconds. So I know that is a unit of time. So I have time. And I am looking for my unknown, I'm looking for distance or x, that is my unknown. So I look at my formulas and I just happen to remember, oh, I know that 1 half g times t squared equals x. So here's my formula. Do I have all the information? Well, I actually do. Remember gravity gravitational acceleration on Earth is always going to be 9.8 meters per second. Okay, so all I simply need to do is plug in the formula. So to do that, I take x equals 1 half 9.8 meters per second, and then multiply it by my time, which is 4.2 seconds squared. So if I do my calculations, this works out to be 4.9 meters per second. And this number works out to be 17.64. And I simply crunch that into the calculator to get a height of 86.4 meters. That's how tall my building is. Let's try another one. So here we have uh, you wanting to win a carnival prize by dropping a ball in a moving basket. So you know you are 15 meters above the basket and you need to solve the amount of time it would take for the ball to reach the uh, basket. So a couple of things, again, let's do our givens. So for our givens, I know that my distance, this case it's x or d, you can use either one, is 15 meters. All right, what am I looking for? My unknown is time. So I do not know what time is, and I'd like to know what it is. A couple of other things I know is that for my formula, my formula is x equals 1 half g times t squared. So do I know g? And the answer is yes, I know that I'm not on any place but Earth because it doesn't mention another planet and so I know that g is 9.8 meters per second squared. So all I simply need to do is plug in my numbers. Now this one is going to be a little tricky because you have to deal with square roots. So I have 1 half 9.8 meters per second squared times t squared. So let's rewrite that to simplify that to be 4.9 meters per second squared, t squared. I want to get t uh, squared all by itself, so I divide each side by 4.9 meters per second squared, as well as this one, 4.9 meters per second squared. And when I do the calculation, that gives me 
a t squared value of 3.57 seconds, but I can't keep it as t squared, so I need to square root both sides, so I have t all by itself. So in this case, t equals 1.89 seconds. So this one is a little bit difficult, different and maybe a little bit conf uh, difficult because of that square root, but just be sure that you do that. Let's try another one. Here we have Seneca that um, has a mass of 62 kilograms. What is the force due to gravity? Well, this is going back to what we did in class. We know that 60 mass times gravitational acceleration equals weight. So in this case, it is the classic scenario of Fg equals Mg. So in this case, my mass is 62 kilograms. My gravitational acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. For this calculation, I'm going to use 10 meters per second squared, just to simplify it a little bit. And so that means that if I plug it into the equation, I take, for my Fg value, 62 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared, and that gives me a force, a gravitational force, of 620 newtons, okay? That is the weight of Seneca. So the next and last one is where you have dropped a piece of china. What is the rate of its fall? Um, so first of all, you know that anything that falls is always traveling at 9.8 meters per second squared. That every second it's falling, it's going to travel 9.8 meters per second faster. OK, so every second that it falls, it'll be traveling 9.8 meters, meters faster. For the next one, it hit the ground in two seconds. What is the velocity? So this is that uh, equation where we have here my china. We'll do a nice little teacup. And it is dropping, dropping, dropping. At two seconds, I want to know how fast it's falling. Well, I know that at one second, I know that it is, so at one second, it's traveling 9.8 meters per second. In the additional second, it speeds up another 9.8 meters per second to be 19.6 meters per second. So here is my velocity after two seconds. And just to remind you, remember velocity is acceleration times time, just like acceleration is a change of velocity over time. So it's just manipulating that equation. So I could have just taken this number and taking the value of t equals 2, I could have taken 2 and multiplied it by my gravitational acceleration, which is 8 meters per second squared, into that, to get the answer of 19.6 meters per second. And that's going to complete this lesson.